This is the Insta360 ONE RS, and I think I have figured out the best way to use this for mountain biking. So in my last video, I showed you guys this 4K boost lens. This little boost lens is part of the module setup that Insta360 offers with this camera. And that's the big benefit, is that you can swap between lenses. This isn't just a 4K boost lens, it offers so many different settings that it can almost make your head spin. From 4K 60 frames a second, active HDR, regular HDR, slow motion, time lapse, 6K wide screen shot. Now that you know that there is a lot of different options, let's take a look and see what each option has to offer. Now one thing I wanna show you guys is what to expect with the image whenever you're shooting in these different modes. Sometimes it does zoom in and crop your image quite a bit. And that's something that I think you should probably know before you purchase this camera. Now let me show you exactly what you're gonna get from each one of the different settings. Now I will be standing at the edge of the screen, but also behind me is a rock in my backyard. If you pay attention to those two things, you'll see exactly how wide it gets or how narrow the field of view gets. So let's go ahead and let's start with 60 frames a second at 4K, and I'll stand by the edge, give you guys a little wave. Now let's flip over to 50 frames a second. As you can see, it gets a little bit wider, a little bit more pulls in, and that's kind of surprising because it's only dropping down by 10 frames a second. Now let's go to the 30 frames a second, and it is significantly wider. As you can see, you're going to capture a lot more. And this is really important when it comes to mountain biking because with really wide handlebars and being that you might be chest mounting it or chin mounting it from your helmet, you need a really wide field of view. And the 60 frames per second is almost too narrow for this style of riding. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at Active HDR. This is actually the widest field of view that you will get out of this 4K boost lens. The next thing that really surprised me is the 6K wide view. Now, I thought this was gonna be extremely wide because it crops in from the top, but actually what it's doing is it's cropping in the sides and on the top, and it's basically compressing that so you're gonna get a really high quality image but as you can see, I have to move in, and at this point, you can't even really see the rock that's in my backyard. Surprised that that's really how much that cropped it in, but that's okay. This is more or less a setting that you'll probably only be using to film landscapes and uh, scenery type views. Now let's switch over to the 360 lens, and let me just say, this lens will get as wide as you want to go because technically it will go all the way around at 360 degrees. Now one thing to take note whenever you do have the 360 lens on, you do get that option to go extremely wide or narrow. The quality isn't going to be as good as this 4K lens because at 5.7K that's for both lenses and whenever you shrink it down to the point of view that you would be looking or that you want to show the viewer, it's going to be significantly lower in quality. All right, now let's go ahead and let's get on the bike. I'm out here at Two Rivers Bike Park and I wanna show you guys all the different settings that I was talking about earlier with this on a mountain bike setup. As you can see, with the 60 frames a second, it is cropped in pretty far. My bars are 780 millimeters in width and it is right at the edge. If I had a little bit more room, it would be a little bit nicer. Wouldn't feel like I'm so cramped up close to the bars, but I think that this is actually a better stabilization than what the 30 frames a second was giving me whenever I showed you that in the GoPro versus the Insta360 ONE RS video. If you guys haven't checked that out, I'll put a link right here so you can check that out. Let's go ahead and let's try out the Active HDR. I would be really surprised if this actually works with mountain biking because of the results that HDR had given me in the past, so I'm excited to try this out. It looks like the stabilization is pretty good on this. It's not perfect. They could work on this a little bit more, but at least those two layers of images that you get with the HDR, they're not separating like they typically do with the standard HDR video. This active HDR is keeping those constant and it looks like it's keeping the lighting pretty good. So this is a decent setup for mountain biking, but whenever you get in the woods, it could be a totally different game. Now, one other thing that I wanted to try out is the 6K wide. This is not at all what this is designed for. So if this is stable at all, I will be really, really surprised. Now, one thing that we did find with the 6K wide is that it's not actually really wide at all. It's actually the most narrow setting in the entire camera. 
it crops down and it crops in. So this by no means is a setting that you're gonna to wanna to be using for mountain biking. So it looks like to me with the 4K lens, you're gonna to wanna to stay with the standard type of shooting scenario where you would either be 4K 30 frames a second up to 4K 60 frames a second. Using active HDR for mountain biking and the 6K wide just really isn't what it was really designed for. And if they were going for the active HDR to be able to be used during mountain biking, they're getting very close, but it's not quite there yet with the stabilization. Now let's go ahead and let's look at the 360 lens. This is the one that I'm most excited about. And the reason being is that there is so much versatility with this. As you guys saw, you can get as wide as you want or as narrow as you want. This is really, really nice. Let's go ahead and let's just take a full run all the way down the slope style with this 360 lens and show you guys exactly what this looks like. This is just capturing so much more of the action. You can kind of see my arms every once in a while. There is a little bit of work that they need to do on the stitching, but overall, I think it does a really good job considering that the camera is less than a foot away from each arm and it stitches them pretty good. That is such a fun course to go down. Now that we've gone down the course, let's take a look at the aspect ratios. This is what's really cool about the 360 camera. You can cycle through all of the different aspect ratios with the same footage that you shot. You don't have to set this ahead of time. This is all done in post afterwards. So if you want a really widescreen epic shot, you can do the widescreen look or you can do the 16 by nine. Or if you're trying to shoot a Instagram reel or a TikTok, you can do the nine by 16. It's all right there. You can zoom in and zoom out. You can change the position of the camera. I love the fact that I can use this camera and it's so versatile. Now, one other thing about the 360 camera that I love is being able to take a tripod with me to the bike park and actually set this up anywhere, ride past it, and then in post, be able to go back and aim my footage towards a subject and then track them. And then once I set the tracking, the camera will follow them as if I have somebody actually there running the camera. As you can see, there are a ton of different ways to utilize the Insta360 ONE RS. It is truly not just one camera. With the modular system, it becomes a completely different camera with each swap of the lens. And that's what I really enjoy about it. It may not be the absolute perfect mountain biking camera, it might not be beating GoPro. In fact, I think they're getting very close to competing with them with their 4K boost lens. I just feel like there is something missing there with the stabilization and the actual image size. But once they get there, it will actually be a true competitor to GoPro. I always love to see competition between the brands that I'm looking at. Having that competition will make a better camera for us as the consumer, and I really am excited about that to see what's gonna happen over the next several years. So overall, I really like the Insta360. Is it my go-to all the time camera? No, it's not. The GoPro is still going to be my go-to all time mountain biking camera, but I really truly love this 360 camera. There's so much you can do with it. It's so versatile. You can get some really cool shots. And as you guys saw, whenever you look at that 360 footage, it looks so much faster. It actually looks like what it feels like whenever you're on the bike. And that's the kind of feeling that I think a lot of people are looking for whenever they're looking at these cameras and watching these videos. They want you to feel like you're actually in the action and the 360 camera does that. My one wish though for this camera and for the future of 360 cameras is that eventually we can actually shoot and get a 4K or at least a 2.7K image whenever we're looking at about 150 degrees of viewing angle. That way it could actually compete solidly with a standard 4K or 2.7K lens. And really honestly, if you could get me 2.7K, I think that would satisfy almost everybody with a 360 camera. If you guys like this video, click that like button, 
Leave me a comment below. Did this change your view on the Insta360? Are you leaning more towards it or are you gonna shy away from it for a little while and see what the next iteration brings? And if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. It really helps out my channel. I will be putting some links down below to all the products that I used in this video. And if you click on those links, they are affiliated. It does help out the channel just a little bit at no extra cost to you. But as always, get out there, run, bike, build, and just have fun. We'll see you in the next one.